All right, hello guys. So today's uh, video lecture is going to be over the unit six stoichiometry notes. Okay. Um, before I go into this, I I just want to stress to you sort of how important this is to the uh, understanding this unit. If you guys learn and and understand um, this concept of stoichiometry conversion you will actually have a grasp on probably close to 80, 85% 80, of this unit um, and be really, really well set. It's super important that you understand um, how these problems work and, and what's happening uh, to being successful in this, in this unit and honestly in a lot of chemistry. Um, this has a lot to do with a lot of stuff. So please, please make sure that you listen through the lecture make sure that you know how to do these if you have questions uh remind text me uh, message me whatever you really need to get this down to understand it you don't want to fall behind on it okay all right let's get into it so stoichiometry weird sounding word um it's essentially using the mathematical relationships present in a balanced chemical equation to determine quantities of reactants and products okay that's kind of uh you know, science vocabulary. I'll, I'll break it down and, and uh, help you understand it. Um, now, oh, one thing, another thing I should mention. In order to do this, you'll want a, uh, you'll want the notes, obviously, and then this sheet I'm going to use. Okay, and then along with that, you're going to want a periodic table. Okay, and a calculator, obviously. Okay. So, uh, all right. You're, we're using the molar ratio, the stuff we learned yesterday, the coefficients to convert from one substance to another. We use Avogadro's number for particles and molar mass for mass to convert between moles and amounts of substances. All right, so what, what is the concept here? If you understand the concept of what's going on, I think a lot of times, um, I think a lot of times that can make the math easier. So what the concept is, is a balanced chemical equation is sort of like a recipe. Okay. I'm trying to find a page to write on here. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me. A balanced chemical equation is kind of like a recipe where we have the reactants, which are like ingredients going into a recipe, and we have product, which is like what you're trying to make. And a recipe is sort of like a, a blueprint or a, um, you know, a plan for, for getting a specific desired result, right? So um, let's, let me explain a little bit with this uh, using a recipe example, and then we'll apply it to our stoichiometry examples. Okay, so let's say if we have um, a cookie recipe, and the cookie recipe is um, two cups of flour, plus uh, one cup of sugar, um, plus, let's see what else, um, uh, Two cups oh, uh, two cups of chocolate chips. I know that's a ton, but whatever. Plus, let's say uh, three eggs. Okay, now I know this is 
probably, I, well, actually, I don't know. But, um, and let's say this makes, um, I don't know, let's say this makes two dozen cookies, 24 cookies. All right. So, um, this is our recipe, right? Okay. If I were to tell you that you have more than enough of everything else, if you have more than enough of everything else, but you have six eggs, how many cookies can you make? Okay, well, everybody's going to look at this and you're going to say right away, 48 cookies, right? Okay, and you say, how do you know? Well, if three eggs make 24, then six eggs should double that, so it'd make 48, right? Okay. Let me show you with dimensional analysis how that actually mathematically you can kind of do the setup. So six eggs, right, is what we have. And according to our recipe, our recipe is a ratio, our ratios of how much of things will, you know, will be used or will be produced. So according to our recipe, so we got eggs up here, so we put eggs down here, and we're trying to find out how many cookies that makes. Okay, and according to our recipe, three eggs will produce 24 cookies, right? So, if we take 6 times 24 divided by 3, look what we get. 48. Okay. Now, of course, for this you wouldn't need to go through all this. You can look at it and you can get the idea, right? Okay. Um, but the idea is still the same. The concept is that like if we have, if we know how much of one thing we have, we can predict how much product will be made. We can also predict how much of the other things we'll need, right? So if we had those six eggs, how many, uh, how many cups of flour would we need? Well, six eggs, we know, according to our recipe, according to our recipe, it is three eggs are used, and we also, and for every three eggs we use, we need two cups of flour, right? The coefficients again. If we do the math, we're going to end up with four cups of flour need to be used. Okay, so not only can we use, use an amount to figure out how much of something is produced, we can use that amount to figure out how much of the other parts we need. Okay, so how does this apply to our stoichiometry? Well, the way it applies is if we're given any one part of the, uh, if, we're, if we're given an amount of any one thing in a, uh, in a balanced e uh, equation or reaction, we can figure out any of the other parts. How much is used, how much is produced, whatever. Okay, using our stoichiometry. So, and that's where this comes in to play. Okay, this little flow chart is, is, is supposed to sort of help you understand the conversions that you need to make. The A and the B on here, okay, represent different substances. So A represents one substance, and B represents a second substance. Okay? So, we'll use this with our practice ones on our stoichiometry notes here to kind of walk through it. All right, so example one, 
Determine the moles of lithium hydroxide produced when 0.38 grams of lithium nitride reacts with water according to the following equation. So what are we starting with? We are starting with 0.38 grams of lithium nitride. So make sure you know what each thing is. Lithium nitride is this one, the Li3N, okay? We are looking for moles of lithium hydroxide. That is this, the LiOH. Okay, so where are we starting on this flow chart? Well, we are starting with grams of one substance, right? So we're going to start over here. Let me back this up just a little bit so you can see the whole flow chart. Okay, we're going to start here. We're starting in grams of our first substance. What are we trying to turn it into? We're trying to turn it into moles. Is it moles of the same substance or a different substance? Well, it's different. So we're trying to do moles of a different substance. So moles of B substance. So here. So what does this flow chart tell us we're going to have to do to convert? We're going to have to turn mass of our first substance, our grams. We're going to turn our grams into moles of that substance. Then we need to go from moles of that substance to moles of our new substance. Okay. One of the keys to the stoichiometry is the only way you can go from one substance to another is moles to moles. So if you have to change substance, if they're giving you an, a number in one substance and you need to get it into a new substance, whether it's moles, particles, or mass, you must get it to moles first. So you can go moles of the old, the first substance to moles of the new substance. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start with what they gave us. 0 0.38 grams of Li3N. And yes, you need to put the whole label in, just like I was telling you yesterday. You need to put both the type of measurement and the substance, both parts. Okay, the reason is, is because we're changing substances halfway through this, so we need to be able to keep track of that. All right, so like I said, our first conversion from grams to moles of the same substance. So I'm going to put my labels in first, leaving room for numbers. So I'm going to put grams of Li3N is up here, so grams Li3N down here, and I'm turning it into moles of Li3N. Okay. Now, grams to moles, what's this conversion? This is from last unit, okay? I added them here on the conversions. One mole of any substance is equal to the molar mass in grams. So, one mole, the molar mass in grams. So, Li is 6.9, so 6.9 times three plus one times N is 14 gives us 34.7 for our grams. Okay, this is the, remember, this is the molar mass. Now, grams are canceled, so now I'm in moles of my first substance. Where do I need to get? Moles of my new substance. So I go another conversion. The label that's up here goes on the bottom so we can cancel moles of Li3N, okay? And this, is, and this is doing what we learned yesterday, the molar ratio conversion, okay? I want to turn it into moles of LiOH. Okay, this is what we did yesterday. So then where, we, where do we get the numbers that go in front of here? Well, when we're going from mole to mole, we use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So we look here, Li3N in front of that, there's nothing. So it's a one. In front of LiOH, there's a three. Okay. These are now canceled. So let's just kind of show it. This cancels, this cancels, and this, and this now cancel. We're left with moles of LiOH, which is what we want. And we, uh, we just do the math. So 0.38 divided by 34.7 times 3, 
we get this. Significant figures for these. Very simple. What, however many your beginning number has, that's how many your answer needs. So we've got two, so we need two. So it's that zero is not a, it doesn't count. So the three and the two, the eight rounds the two up. So it's zero point zero three three moles of LiOH. And yes, you need both parts of the label. Okay. So your work needs to be done exactly the way you see it here. I don't want any deviations. I don't want you leaving stuff out just like this. And yes, I will also be grading on work as usual. All right. Example two. How many, how many formula units of sodium iodide? So as we go through this, I'm actually going to highlight what we're looking for. So here we were looking for moles of lithium hydroxide. Here, how many formula units of sodium iodide? must be used to completely react with 4.37 moles of chlorine gas. Okay, so chlorine gas, the gas doesn't mean anything. It just, it's just telling you kind of what form it's in. So it's just chlorine. So what's the only thing that's chlorine here? The Cl2. So chlorine's a Cl2. Formula units of sodium iodide. Where's sodium iodide? Well, sodium and iodine, this one, NaI. All right, so just like the other one, we start with what we're given. 4.37 moles of Cl2. Make sure you're using what's in here. So it's chlorine, but it's not just Cl because that's diatomic because of Hofbrinkel. So it's Cl2 for that because that's what it shows here. You use what's in the equation. Okay. Moles of Cl2. Now we want to get to formula units of sodium iodide. So let's look at our flow chart. Where are we starting? We're starting with moles starting with moles of our first substance. So that's here, moles of A. We're not starting over here, we're starting here, moles of A. We wanna to get to formula units of a different substance. So formula units is particles. So of a new substance, formula units. So we wanna go from moles to formula units of a new thing. Moles of first thing to formula units of a new one. So what do we have to do first? We have to first turn it into the new substance before we can convert it to formula units. So, first thing here, moles of Cl2 on the top, moles of Cl2 on the bottom. We're turning it into moles of our new substance, NaI. Numbers in front. Remember, these came from coefficients, right? Okay. okay, so what's in front of NAI? A two. What's in front of Cl2? Nothing, so a one. Okay. Now, we're in moles of NAI. The moles of Cl2 have canceled. Now, we remember, we're trying to get it into formula units of sodium iodide. So, we need to convert, so we're gonna do another conversion. I'm gonna leave room for my number in front here. Uh, so I go from moles of NaI, so I can cancel it, so that goes down here. And I'm gonna turn it into formula units, so Fu of NaI. Okay, now what's my conversion from moles of formula units? This is, again, stuff from last unit. Well, we look on our little flowchart here. Down here, I've got it. One mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, molecules, or formula units. So that's one mole of NaI, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaI. Okay. These labels cancel now. Moles of NaI cancel out we're left with formula units of NaI, which is what we want. So we can just do the math. So multiply by anything on top, divide by anything on the bottom, times 2, times 6.02, times 10 to the 23rd, gives us this significant figures. There's three, so we need three. So it's 5. Point, let's see, 2, 6, the 1 doesn't round the 6 up, so 2, 6 
times 10 to the 24th formula unit, so FU and AI. There we go. And again, yes, you need to show all this. All right, example three. Determine the mass of carbon dioxide. So we're looking for the mass of carbon dioxide. So remember, mass is, we're going to be doing mass in grams. Carbon dioxide, CO2. And again, if you guys, if you look up here and you don't know what something is, you don't have to figure it out. You just look down and, I mean, you do, but you just look down in the, in the um, balanced equation and find the thing that matches up with it. Okay. So we're looking for grams of CO2. Produced when 0 0.85 grams of butane reacts with oxygen gas according to the following equation. So what are we starting with? 0 0.85 grams of butane. Okay, butane is the C4H10. So we're starting with grams of our first substance, right? And we're trying to find grams of a new substance. So let's look on our flow chart. We're starting with... Hold this up so I can still see my chart a little bit here. Okay, we're starting with grams of our first substance. So where is that? That's over here, mass of A. We need to get to grams of a new substance. So where is that? That's over here. So what do we need to do? So we need to first turn grams of our first substance into moles of that, because the only way we can change to a new substance is moles of our new substance to moles of, or I'm sorry, is from moles of our beginning substance into moles of our new substance. Then we're going to turn moles of our new substance into grams of the new substance. Okay, so let's start this out. 0 0.85, I'll zoom in a little bit here. So I'm going to make sure I try to leave myself a lot of room here. So 0 0.85 grams of butane, C4H10. Okay, whatever's up here goes on the bottom to cancel. So grams of C4H10. Remember, our first step, we're turning grams of our first thing into moles. So moles C4H10. Okay, gram to mole conversion from last unit. It's one mole for the molar mass. So I do uh, carbon is 12 times there's four of them plus uh, hydrogen is one. So one times 10 is 10, so plus 10. So 58. Okay. All right. So now grams of C4H10 have canceled. We are now in moles. So now we're here. We need to get to moles of our new substance. So I'm going to go moles of C4H10 on the bottom. I'm turning it into moles of our new substance, which is uh, CO2 is what we need to be into. So we're not grams yet, we're in mole. We've got to turn it to moles first. So remember, mole to mole coefficients, right? So we do, um, in front of CO2, there is an eight. In front of C4H10, there's a two. Okay, now, moles of C4H10 cancel. We're in moles of CO2, so we're here. We need to get to grams of CO2. So we got to turn our moles of CO2. So label on top goes on the bottom into grams of CO2. Okay. So this again, moles to grams. So it's one mole for the molar mass. So carbon, uh, one times 12 is 12 plus oxygen is 16 times two gives us a total of 44 grams for CO2 for one mole. Okay, the moles of CO2 is now canceled out. And we're in grams of CO2, which is what we're trying to find. So now we just do the math. Let's multiply and divide. 25 divided by 58 times 8 divided by 2 times 44 
and we get this significant figures we start with two so our answer needs two so it would be the two and the five the seven does round the five up so we end up with 2.6 and our label grams co2 all right so far so good i know this is a longer uh, lecture that's why i'm only you only have to do the lecture for today uh, but we've got a couple more here that we want to run through. All right. Example four. Determine the number of formula units of nickel 2 nitrate. So determine the number of formula units of nickel 2 nitrate is what we're looking for. Okay. Needed to produce. Oh, uh, so nickel 2 nitrate. Let's find that. Nickel 2 nitrate. So... Nickel is Ni, so it's got to be one of those two. Nitrate is the NO3, so it's got to be this one. So it's the Ni, NO3, 2. Uh, we're finding the formula units of that, right? Okay. Uh, needed to produce 7.45 times 10 to the 25th formula units of sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate, sodium is Na, sodium nitrate is the NaNO3. So I'm just going to write that under there so we can remember. Uh, so we're starting in formula units of that, right? Okay. So let's take a look. We're starting in formula units of our first substance. So on our flow chart, that is formula units of our first substance is over here. Okay, we need to get it into formula units of a new substance. So formula units of our new substance is over here. So similar to the mass to mass, we've got to turn the particle unit, the formula units of the first substance into moles. And we go from moles of our beginning substance to moles of our new substance. And we go from moles of our new substance to formula units of the new substance. Okay. All right. Let's... So again, this one probably a little longer, so I'm going to really try to make sure I have enough room here. So 7.45 times 10 to the 25th formula units of NaNO3. Okay. Okay, we need to first, we're turning it, remember, into moles. Okay, so label up here comes on the bottom leaving some room for a number. Okay, uh, we're turning into moles of NaNO3. Okay, our moles to formula units conversion is the moles to formula units. Is Remember the Avogadro's number for the formula units, one for the mole. So one mole, 6.02, times 10 to the 23rd for the formula units. Okay. So formula units of NaNO3 have canceled now. Now we're here, we need to turn it to moles of our new substance. So moles of NaNO3 on the bottom. Turning it into moles of our new substance, which is right here, what we're looking for, the NiNO3, two. Okay, mole to mole is coefficients. In front of the NiNO3, two, nothing, so it's a one. In front of the NaNO3 is a two. Okay, our moles of NaNO3 have now canceled. We've got moles of NiNO3, two, trying to get it into formula units. So we're here. On the flow chart, we need to get here. So, another conversion. Moles of NaNO3, 2 on the bottom. And I'm converting it into formula units. I'm going to leave, try to leave some room here for the number. Formula units of the NiNO3, 2. Okay, this conversion, 
always the same. 1 for the mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd for the formula unit. Okay? These cancel. And we do the math. Right? Now, I'm going to show you how it would go type all in, and then I'm going to show you something else for this. Okay, So 7.45 times 10 to the 25th. Okay? Now, divided by, now remember, if you've got something with a times 10 or whatever on the bottom, when we divide by it, we got to put that in parentheses so our calculator reads it correctly. So divided by parentheses, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, end parenthesis, like that. Okay, then uh, divided by two, divided by two, okay, and then times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is our answer. Okay, um, so uh, significant figures, our beginning number has three. So our answer needs three. I'm going to put our I'm going to put my answer down here. So it would be three to seven to two. The five does round the two up, so we get uh, three point seven three times ten to the twenty fifth. And this is uh, our label is. I'm being careful. I'm almost running out of room here. Formula units of and I N L three two. Is the answer. Okay, now in terms of typing this in your calculator, some of you probably noticed we were multi we were dividing and multiplying by the same number here. The 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we were both multiplying and dividing by. If that happens, the setup like that, you can actually, those actually can cancel each other out. And you could just like do the 7.45 times 10 to the 25th divided by two, and that would kick you right to your answer. Okay. Only if the numbers are exactly the same they, and they're top and bottom, they can cancel. All right. Good job. We are to the last one. So, Determine the number of molecules of oxygen gas. So we're looking for molecules of oxygen gas. So molecules, oxygen gas, we look here, oxygen is just the O2. Don't forget it's O2. Determine the molecules of oxygen gas needed to com uh, combust 1.34 grams of magnesium. So magnesium, just my MG here, right? Okay, so let's see. We're starting with grams of magnesium. So where is that on our flow chart? Grams of magnesium, it's right here. We need to turn it into molecules of a new substance. So where is molecules of a new substance? That's down here. So we're gonna have to go mass of our beginning substance to moles of the beginning substance, moles of our beginning substance to moles of our new substance, moles of our new substance to molecules okay we can go anywhere on this flow chart like we can go grams to moles to moles to grams we can go grams to moles to moles to any of the particles we can go particles to moles to moles to grams we can go particles to moles to moles to particles you can go pretty much anywhere on this flow chart you just got to follow the conversion okay so we are doing we are starting with the grams we've got to do grams to moles first so Zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so we're start with a 134. Okay, so we're gonna start with 134 grams of magnesium. We're turning grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium. Okay, this conversion is the Molar mass to the mole, so one mole. Grams of magnesium, we look on the periodic table, that's 24.3. Okay. 
All right, grams of magnesium have canceled. We're in moles of magnesium. We need to get it into oxygen. So we're gonna go moles of magnesium on the top, moles of magnesium on the bottom, to moles of the oxygen. Okay, we need it in molecules, but we have to go to moles first, right? So doing this, these are the coefficients. So in front of O2, there's nothing, so it's a one. In front of Mg, there's a two. Like that, we're out of mole, we're canceling moles of magnesium now, we're in moles of oxygen, we need to get into molecules of oxygen. So, label on the top comes on the bottom, moles of O2, turning it into molecules of O2. Moles to molecules, this is again from last unit, the one for the mole, molecules is particles, so it's 6.02 and send to the 23rd. Okay, moles of oxygen have now canceled. We're in molecules of oxygen, which is what we want. And we can just do the math. So 134 divided by 24.3 divided by two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us this. Um, significant figures, again, going by the beginning number. So we had three here, so our answer needs three. So it's the one, the six, and the five. The nine does round the five up. So it's 1.66 times 10 to the 24th. And my label, molecules of O2. Okay. So... We made it to the end. Um, hopefully that was a you know, good enough explanation and enough uh, examples to help you out. Um, that's pretty much you know, it for this. Uh, the homework, the stoichiometry worksheet uh, will be done on a separate day. Um, but if you guys have any questions about any of this or where numbers are coming from or why we're putting things where we are, um, please make sure you ask. It's really important that you uh, understand this and get this, this concept down, okay? All right. See everybody later.